Welcome to The Note, I'm Mika. People all over the intertubes were freaking out yesterday after a list of N64 games were discovered on a Nintendo's UK website, a list that people speculated might be for the N64 Classic. But unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. It's actually just a list of N64 Virtual Console games for the Wii U. Although, to be fair to the people who didn't realize that, it's not like very many people even had a Wii U to see that for themselves. So for now, we can just look at this list, which includes games like Bomberman 64, Donkey Kong 64, Excitebike 64, F-Zero X, Pokemon Snap, Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, and Star Fox 64, and do a little, do a little bit daydreaming, and, and reminiscing, and wishing, and crying that it's not on our Switches yet. The Xbox One X is out, and apparently it's off to a pretty good start, with GameStop saying that they've sold through nearly their entire stock in the console's first 24 hours. The retailer announced the sell-through last night and said that they'll be getting a new allotment soon. Of course, we've got no idea how big their shipment was, and they didn't sell through all of it, but at least it's some early indication that along with those pre-orders, the Xbox One X is doing all right out of the gate. This week, analysts at IHS Market nearly doubled their projections of the Xbox One X for 2017, up to almost Almost a million units, so congrats, Xbonix. That's what I'm calling you from now on. Good news, Switch owners. The console is getting its first streaming app now, today. Yeah, that's soon. In a surprise announcement this week, Nintendo revealed that Hulu will be landing on the device in a new update. It's not Netflix, but hey, you know what? We will take it. The rumor at the moment is that Netflix will be making its way to Switch sometime early next year, so now you've got the best of both worlds. Streaming TV, Super Mario Odyssey, and still no multiplayer service, but you know, you got the TV and the Mario, so deal with it. Despite the recent smashing success of Call of Duty World War II, it looks like that wasn't always developer Sledgehammer's first choice for their game setting. According to a new interview with Activision CEO Eric Hirschberg, Sledgehammer would have gone back to the Advanced Warfare well for a sequel to that series, but it seems Activision intervened. Hirschberg told Newsweek that Activision convinced Sledgehammer to go to World War II, saying, we knew they would become historians, that they would tackle it with authenticity, give it tremendous care, and we also knew they would capture the unspeakable scale of World War II. What I love about this game is that anyone who's looking forward to going back to the roots, the gritty, human-scale, boots-on-the-ground, militaristic, authentic experience that Call of Duty is known for, this game delivers it in a big way. Judging by how well the game has sold out of the gate, everyone involved is probably happier it turned out like that and their boots were indeed on the ground. Sorry, JRPG fans, it looks like you've got a little bit of heartache in store because there are rumors going around that Nino Kuni 2 might be getting delayed yet again. Several gamers who pre-ordered have reported receiving emails from Best Buy citing a new release date for the game, which is March 9th. If you're wondering, the actual release date is supposed to be January 19th, which got set after another recent delay from the end of this year. So we've either got some kind of error in Best Buy system or everyone is going to have to wait a couple more months to jump back into the Revenant Kingdom. Is Obsidian working on a new game? Well, that seems to be the case in a recent tweet. The developer behind games like Fallout New Vegas and the South Park The Stick of Truth tweeted a timeline of all the games it's made, from Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 to Pillars of Eternity 2, and then at the end of that list, it put a series of question marks. So what does that mean? Well, it's anyone's guess, and trust us, a lot of people were trying to guess on Twitter. So far, Obsidian hasn't said anything else, but you know we will keep you posted. It looks like Warner Brothers has more plans for Harry Potter, and we're not just talking about movies. After it was revealed that we'd be getting a Pokemon Go-ish Harry Potter game for mobile devices, Warner Brothers Gaming Division announced the creation of a new Harry Potter games label called Portkey Games. The label will create a series of mobile and console game experiences, and like we said, the first of which will be the AR game Wizards Unite, which will be made in conjunction with Niantic Labs. According to the Pottermore website, the games will feature both new characters and excitingly could feature familiar characters characters at different points in their lives from the Harry Potter stories. And that's all we really know at this point, but Pottermore says there will be updates on more developments really soon. You will be pissed if there are no more Witcher games ever, right? Well, you know, don't worry, CD Projekt Red knows that and they've got it covered. 
In an interview with Polish financial site that was translated thanks to a user on Reset Era, CEO Adam Kaczynski said his studio doesn't have any plans for Witcher 4 because they envisioned the first three games as a trilogy. But he added that they still have the right to the Witcher IP and they'll probably make other games that are set in the Witcher universe. Kaczynski also said that both fans and investors won't forgive them if they abandon the franchise. So hey, at least they're listening to their audience. As for their latest game, Cyberpunk 2077, he said that the game will be much bigger in scope than Witcher 3 and that they hope it will set the quality bar even higher than Witcher 3 did. So that's some lofty goals right there. Director Ridley Scott is wasting no time in reacting to the sexual misconduct allegations leveled at one of the stars of his latest movie. The legendary director has a movie coming out next month featuring Kevin Spacey called All the Money in the World. Okay, well, strike that, the legendary director had a movie coming out featuring Kevin Spacey. The film is about the real life kidnapping of J. Paul Getty III and Spacey, under a ton of old age makeup, played his billionaire grandfather. Scott will reshoot all of Spacey's scenes, replacing him with veteran actor Christopher Plummer and is doing it so quickly that they think they can still make their very awards friendly December 22nd release date. So power to ya. Sony has been developing a Metal Gear Solid movie for a while now and have taken another step forward in actually making that adaptation a reality. The studio already has a director in Kong Skull Island's Jordan Vogt Roberts and has now hired Jurassic World screenwriter Derek Conaloy to bring Solid Snake to life. No details on the plot have come out yet, but Vogt Roberts said that he's aware of how Hollywood has consistently failed at video game adaptations and he vows not to screw this one up. If they want to be a game accurate, I expect Solid Snake will spend at least 80% of the time talking to people via codec. This one will make you feel old. And if I'm saying that, you're really gonna feel old. 17 years ago today, the multiplayer first person shooter Counter-Strike was released by Valve in 2000. You might remember that it was initially developed as a Half-Life mod and its creators were later hired by Valve, which released it on Windows. Of course, Counter-Strike went on to become a seminal multiplayer game and spawned a huge competitive scene as well as a number of spin-offs. The latest version, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, was released in 2012 and has long been one of the most popular games on Steam. So happy birthday, Counter-Strike! You're almost old enough to vote and buy a hooker. Wait, strike that. So that's all the news we have for you today. For more news from every corner of the internet, remember to like this video and if you're new right here, subscribe to the good old no. So for now, we can just Look at this list, which includes games like Bomberman 64, Donkey Kong 64, Excite Bite 64, F Zero X, Pokemon Snap, Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, and Star 64, and do a little bit of daydreaming and reminiscing and hoping and wishing.